Listen guys, I'll be the first to admit it, I wasn't the most athletic kid. My friends knew it, my coaches knew it, my grandma knew it, but that wasn't going to stop me from trying to mimic my favorite players on the field. Even though I had no pop, I was swinging as hard as Mike Piazza. I wasn't fast, but when I got the green light, I felt like Kenny Lofton. And whenever I found myself at shortstop for some reason, I was trying my hardest to look like the one and only Troy Tulowitzki. Tulo is one of those iconic players that kind of feels like a lost relic in baseball. He played in one of the least marketed eras of the game back in the mid 2000s thousands, but the guy was an absolute freak of nature. He was probably the best defensive shortstop since Ozzie Smith, but could also hit 30 home runs in a season, each of them going 450 feet. We're in a golden age of shortstops right now, but back in his time, there was no one like Troy Tulowitzki. He was the igniting fire for two separate magical playoff runs. He achieved one of the greatest offensive stretches by a shortstop in MLB history. He was a historic player when he was healthy, and today we're going to talk about just how good he was. Guys, Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for all future notifications. Troy Tulowitzki was drafted in 2005 with the seventh overall pick in what became one of the best first rounds in recent MLB history. Eight of the top 12 picks in the 2005 draft became all-stars in the MLB, and six of the top 12 accumulated over 30 wins above replacement in their career. Most of these guys played well into the next decade. Hell, Andrew McCutcheon is still raking for the Pirates as we speak. Tulowitzki generated a ton of hype as a prospect and for good reasons, and he surged through amateur ball, playing just 126 minor league games across one season before the Rockies decided, yeah, this kid might be pretty good, let's call him up. He got 25 games a run in 2006 as the Rockies wrapped up a disappointing losing season, but he'd be the starting shortstop for the season that followed, the most memorable year in that franchise's history. Now, he didn't start the season particularly strong, with a 185 batting average through the first 18 games of the year, but after beating out Clint Barmas for the shortstop job, Tulowitzki was set to embark on one of the most impressive rookie campaigns in recent baseball history. He finished his first half with 9 home runs and a 790 OPS, a nice first year story but still being overshadowed by the likes of Milwaukee's Ryan Braun and Houston's Hunter Pence. The Rockies as a whole didn't seem like they were setting up for a miracle season at this point either. They were a 500 team at the halfway point of the season with a 44 and 44 record, which certainly was better than recent seasons but not enough to get into serious playoff contention. Though he wasn't dominant just yet, fans were realizing the talent that Tulowitzki was early on. He was a spectacle in the field, unleashing his cannon arm and contorting his body to make unbelievable plays on a routine basis. He had one of the best defensive seasons for a shortstop on record in his rookie year, as his 3.9 defensive wins above replacement in 2007 led all major league players. He was also credited with 31 defensive runs saved as well, which is tied for fourth most by a shortstop in the last 20 seasons of play. And while he was dazzling with the glove all season, his bat kicked into gear as the summer went on. In August, he collected 25 RBIs and 14 extra base hits for a 960 OPS as Colorado climbed to four games over 500 by the end of the month. On September 10th, he smacked his 20th home run of the year, the most by a National League rookie shortstop since Ernie Banks back in the 1950s, with over 50 runs batted in between just August and September alone. He helped the Rockies win 14 of their last 15 games, including a dramatic Game 163 tiebreaker to serve into the playoffs as a wildcard team. He kept the good times rolling in that first playoff series, going back to back with his teammate Holiday off Philly starter Kyle Kendrick, another National League rookie. The Rockies would sweep their way to the World Series, ultimately losing to the Red Sox to close the 2007 season. For Troy Tulowitzki, a ride to the Fall Classic was fitting for everything he accomplished in his first full season as a big leaguer. He led all National League rookies in games played, runs scored, runs batted in, doubles, and wins above replacement, including setting the record for a single season RBI total by a rookie shortstop, falling one shy of that triple digit mark. Surprisingly enough, he wasn't a shoe in for the title of best rookie in the National League. His only real competition for rookie of the year is the aforementioned Ryan Braun, who did have him beat in the triple slash line as well as home runs. In the end, Braun took home the award by a margin of just two vote points, which at the time was the closest race in the voting system's history dating back to 1980. A lot of people don't like war, so I'll leave this one up to you guys, but I think Troy Tulowitzki had a pretty competitive compelling case. Not even counting the extra dozen games he played on the Rockies' run to the World Series, Tulowitzki played in 155 games in his first season in MLB. Crazily enough, this is a mark he would never reach again in a single season, as he played in over 130 games just three more times in his career in 2009, 2011, and 2016. We'll get into why that is very soon, but first, let's keep it with the good times. Yeah. 
answer. Oh. How you doing? The Rockies made perhaps one of the best economic decisions in their franchise's history when they acted quickly to lock up Tulo for the foreseeable future. They inked the stud shortstop to a six-year, $31 million extension. You see this kind of stuff all the time now with teams like the Braves and even recently the Cubs doing this with their core players, but back then, this kind of thing was unheard of. At the time, this was the largest ever contract for a player with less than two years of big league experience. That is, until Ryan Braun beat him out again, signing an eight-year deal with the Brewers later in May of that year. These guys should fight. Hell, I'll officiate it, all right? Let's just settle the score. Tulo played in only 101 games in the first year of his new deal, with 2008 being one of the more disappointing seasons of his career. The injuries would become more of a theme later on in his career, but first, Troy was going to accomplish one of the greatest peaks ever by a shortstop. His 2009 season was simply one of the greatest by a shortstop in Major League history on both sides of the diamond. He became one of just eight shortstops ever to record a season with at least 30 home runs, 20 stolen bases, and 25 doubles, joined by another all-time great Rocky shortstop in Trevor Story. For a Colorado team that had seen the departure of franchise face Matt Holliday a season prior, Tulowitzki took on more offensive responsibility in stride and helped them return to the playoffs. Add in him recording the fifth cycle in Rockies history on top of his defensive prowess, and you get a season where Tulowitzki finished fifth in National League MVP voting in just his third season. But he wasn't stopping there. The season kicked off a dominant three-year stretch as Tulowitzki ascended to becoming the best shortstop in all of baseball. In 2010, he finished top five in the MVP vote once again, making his first all-star team and snagging his first gold glove, which at this point probably should have been like his third gold glove. He overcame a fractured wrist halfway through the season to finish strong and play in over 120 games. He finished that 2010 season leading all MLB shortstops in home runs, RBIs, batting average, on-base percentage, slugging, and OPS. And this was thanks in large part to a monster showing in the final month of the season, where he managed a 1.120 September OPS with 15 home runs, three more home runs than he hit in the prior five months combined. From September 3rd to the 18th of that month, he clubbed 14 home runs with 31 RBIs, becoming only the fifth player ever to hit 14 home runs in a 15-game span. Of this list, he's the only player to amass 30 RBIs, which meant he averaged two in every game he played. This is something Barry Bonds didn't even do. You could argue these two weeks were the best of any shortstop in baseball history. The Rockies saw all of this and said, fuck it, more extensions for Tulo. He got another six-year deal on top of the existing three years left on his original contract, this time worth $120 million. He responded in kind by putting up another MVP caliber season in 2011. He became just the second National League shortstop to produce a 30 home run, 100 RBI season after, you guessed it, Chicago Cubs Hall of Famer Ernie Banks did it five times. In terms of both leagues since the expansion era began, he's one of just eight shortstops to do so, the most recent being Manny Machado and Trevor Story, who did so in 2018. And when he won his second gold glove at the end of this 2011 season at age 26, he became the youngest NL shortstop to win two since Ozzie Smith in 1981. See, I wasn't exaggerating before. He closed the season with a 131 OPS+, plus, his third season in a row with an OPS+, plus above 130. This landmark season concluded an unbelievable three-year stretch for the high-flying shortstop. During this time frame, he topped all Major League shortstops in basically every offensive category. Of all Major League players with at least 400 games played in this trio of seasons, he ranked top 15 for all of these same categories, including top 10 in wins above replacement and top 5 in slugging, doing all of this while playing one of the toughest positions in sports at the top of his class. And he'd go on to become one of just five shortstops in the expansion era with five separate seasons of an OPS plus better than 130, achieving this in the near future. But it's about time we start discussing that future because Tulo's second contract would not fare as well as his first. After playing in over 100 games five seasons in a row from his rookie year through 2011, the injury woes began creeping in in May of the following season, where a torn groin ended his year after just 47 games of play. In 2013, it was a fractured rib that put him on the shelf for 25 games. Hip injuries derailed his 2014 season in July. This added to an already long laundry list of injuries for Tulo to that point. The frustrating thing is that when Tulo was healthy, he was still 
awesome. Injuries weren't deterring him from being the greatest shortstop in baseball when he was on the field, making two more All-Star teams, receiving MVP votes two more times, and compiling a 144 OPS plus and over a thousand plate appearances from 2012 to 2014. In that last year specifically, Tulowitzki won April Player of the Month in the National League. In that first half of play where he was healthy, he became one of just 24 players in the expansion era to play in over 80 games in a single half while batting over 340 and hitting over 20 home runs, a list including his longtime teammate Todd Helton, one of four to do it twice. Tulowitzki in 2014, at the age of 30, was on pace for one of his best seasons ever, but the writing was on the wall once he underwent labral repair surgery that ended that season. The injuries were piling up, and though he once electrified the city, Troy Tulowitzki couldn't be the same player on the other side of every injury he had to endure. Midway through 2015, the front office severed ties in a move devastating to both the fans and Tulowitzki himself. To this day, the relationship between Tulo and the Rockies remains unrepaired, as the de facto captain of the team was informed that he'd be involved in every step of the process at that year's trade deadline. Instead, he was pulled in the ninth inning of a loss to the Cubs on July 27th and was told that he had been traded to the Toronto Blue Jays, completely blindsided. For a Rockies front office that has made many, many, many mistakes over the years, this remains one of their worst. Troy Tulowitzki might be the most impressive player in their history. From his rookie season in 2007 through the end of 2013, his 154 home runs and 546 runs batted in were the most among all major league shortstops. From 2009 to 2014, he compiled 30.6 wins above replacement in a six-year span, which was 10 more wins than the next closest shortstop in that time frame. He was simply in a league of his own when he was healthy, and he loved playing in Colorado. Even though a trade might have made sense, it's still a tough pill to swallow all of these years later. As for Tulo and the Blue Jays though, he was once again the spark plug necessary for a team to go on a magic run to the playoffs. Toronto was 50 and 51, fourth place in the American League East before they acquired him. After the trade, they went 43 and 18 the rest of the way thanks to his world-stopping defense and boost to their already potent lineup. Tulo even got signature playoff moments, clubbing a pair of three-run home runs that proved to be the difference in Toronto's wins in game three of both the AL DS and ALCS. His tenure in Toronto after the second half of 2015 was once again injury riddled and not that impressive at the plate. He was eventually cut prior to the 2018 season while still being owed $38 million on his contract. After a brief five game stint with the Yankees, he called it a career in 2019 after 13 seasons in the show. Like most players of his kind, his career is bittersweet, an insane peak followed by years of frustration thanks to debilitating injuries. As it stands, Troy Tulowitzki is one of just 30 primary shortstops ever to accrue over 40 wins above replacement over his entire career. He won't be a Hall of Famer, but had he stayed healthy, I think he stood a really good shot to be regarded as one of the best shortstops in Major League history. He was electric, there's really no other way to put it, and I'm hard pressed to find another player that made me feel the way that Troy Tulowitzki did. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and now a word from today's sponsor. DraftKings, guys, baseball season is finally back in full swing it's the moment we've all been waiting for six months of glorious regular season baseball and you can bet on it all right now at DraftKings with some special offers right now if you bet five dollars on any pre-game money line bet and that bet cashes you'll get 150 dollars in bonus bets you can use that bonus bet money combine it into a same game parlay like which team will win one player to hit a home run one player to record a certain amount of strikeouts and you have a shot in an even bigger payout at the end of the day so download the free and easy to use DraftKings King Sportsbook app now. Use promo code OLIVE, O-L-I-V-E, bet $5 on a pregame money line bet, and if that bet cashes, you'll get $150 in bonus bets instantly, only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details, and also any resources you might need for a gambling addiction or gambling help are listed in my description right down there below. Thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. I'll see you guys next time.